Good morning, good afternoon, or good night to whatever time you're watching this at. It is such a delight to be able to talk to you today. My name is Karis, and I'm the oldest grandchild of Drs. Tony and Lois Evans. And so, like I said, it is an honor to be able to speak uh, to the women who I grew up with in the church, um, who I grew up knowing, who grew up knowing me. And so I'm excited to talk to you today. We were supposed to meet a few Wednesdays ago, but there was a big storm that actually never happened, but church was canceled and I was so disappointed in the moment, but I'm actually so grateful now because God had some things to teach me over those few weeks that I really needed to relay to you. And so God works everything out um, in his great plan. I want to tell you a story. Uh, recently, I've had some, some success uh, in my heart posture towards my own body. I've started to view it like the temple of the Holy Spirit that it is, which has then led me on to have some success in weight loss. And over the last eight years, on many different occasions in between having four children, I have tried to lose weight. And at those points in time, now looking back, my motive behind it was vanity. My motive behind it was fitting into cute clothes. My motive behind it was looking good to other people and even feeling good in my own body. And now I realize that my heart posture wasn't in the right place in those times. And that's truly why there wasn't lasting and sustained change. I know some other people who had some problems with their heart posture. In Matthew 23, 25 through 26, it says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of extortion and rapacity, you blind Pharisee. First, cleanse the inside of the cup and of the plate, that the outside may also be clean. Like I said, looking back, that struggle that I had was so vain and it was so external. <laughs> and now that I've had some success, it is really because of the internal. Just like the Pharisees, we must first cleanse our insides before we can even attempt to see things externally. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Let's dissect pure of heart a little bit because I can't count how many times I've read that passage and just skimmed right over it because it's kind of vague if you aren't in the Holy Spirit and attuned to what he has to say to you. And so I did have to look deeply into this because I was kind of confused. What does it mean to be pure in heart? What does it mean to see God? And so if you're like me and you're a little confused on what pure in heart means for you, let's define it a little bit. When Jesus spoke the words pure in heart, he was speaking in Aramaic and the Aramaic phrase is didaka belavu. And that word didaka comes from the root word daka, which means to purge. It means to remove all toxins. In the Hebrew word, there's also daka, but daka means something differently it, in Hebrew. It means a field that is ready for planting, a field where all the stones and rocks have been removed and it is ready to accept a seed. In Greek, um, the word for pure is katharai, and it's most often used to describe water that is clean, water that is pure, water that is unmixed, water that is undefiled. My husband, I like to talk about him because I love him so much, but he is an entrepreneur. And one of the things that he does is he acts as a marketing consultant for a few different businesses. And he is a fantastic marketing strategist. And one thing that I notice often that happens is he'll go into these businesses, he'll see the way that they do things. And then he often recommends and says, you're doing too many things. You have your hand in too many baskets. You're trying to be all things for all people. You need to niche down. And so as lovers of God, we need to niche down on him. Pure of heart means not having double allegiance. It means to will one thing and one thing only, which is the will of God. James 4, 8 says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mark 12, 30 through 31 says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, and with all of your might. My son JT is so 
cute. He is a five-year-old boy. He is bubbling. He is full of energy. He's constantly moving. And so many times when I'm talking to him, I want him to look me straight in the eyes. And he may be looking at me in the eyes, but he's moving. His whole body, he's just got the jitters. He can't be still. And even though he's looking at me, His actions aren't modeling what his eyes are doing. And I think many times we may be looking at Christ, but our actions, we're moving. We have our hands in different pots. We haven't made our hearts singular in focus. We're double-minded. We're doing too many things while we're still looking at him. And those two things don't mix. Those two things aren't being pure of heart. And so Philippians 3.13 starts with, but one thing I do. Jeremiah 32, 39 says, I will give them one heart. I will give them one way. And so being pure of heart is having a singleness of heart. I was going through this verse and understanding what pure of heart was. And then I started to get anxious and really, truly was like, God, Am I pure of heart? (laughs) Am I what I'm telling these women that they should be? Am I what I'm, you know, describing to these women? And so I I developed a little test of knowing uh, what pure of heart is. I'll say first that my daughter Ellie um, is very exuberant with all of her emotions and all of her actions. Um, Some would call her, I'm not calling her this, but some would call her a drama queen. Uh, She is just very deep and emotional and thoughtful. And recently she was having a crisis of faith. She was sitting on her bed, deeply disturbed, crying. Josh and I were around her and she was just saying, how do I know if it's God? It sounds like me talking. How do I know if it's my voice or it's his voice? I'm just not sure. I just can't tell. And so if you're asking that of yourself, am I pure of heart? I'm just not sure. I can't tell. Here are a few questions that you can ask of your heart. First, you can ask, Are my desires in line with that of the fathers? It reminds me of that song, I'll take whatever you desire. Lord, lead my life. I know I've often asked God, what is your will for my life? What great things do you want me to do for you? And I think that we often ask ourselves that question in the wrong order instead of asking God, God, what is your desire for my life? We should be saying, God, What is your will and being focused and all consumed on his will and then figuring out in my life, in the experiences that I have and the people that I can touch in my community, in my church, in my city, in my state, what can I do to align myself with your will? It is first knowing the will of God and it is first understanding his desires and being in line with those. If you don't know if your desires are in line with his or like Ellie, if it's your voice that you're hearing and not God's, the thing that you can do is pray Psalms 139, which says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious ways. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me into the way everlasting. Be prepared though, because in my own experience, those impurities will rise to the top and the scooping them off that God does can be an uncomfortable thing. And so the testing of your faith will prove endurance and be prepared for that. Once you have aligned your own heart with God's will and you are single minded and single focused, You want to align your actions. Like I talked about with JT, our eyes a lot of times may be looking at the Lord while our bodies are doing everything but that. And so we want to align. Uh, I personally have wanted to be skinny forever, um, but I've realized that desiring something doesn't always equate to the action. And so we want to align our actions to desire what he desires, but then also question ourselves and say, am I obeying his commanded written will? Start there. What has he written? What has he commanded you to do that you are maybe looking at him, but your body is not doing that thing. Look in scripture and ask yourself, do my actions align with my heart posture? 
I recently started running and let me say that it was not because I decided to start running because I hate running with every fiber of my being because every fiber of my being is on fire when I run. But God told me to run and after days and weeks of just Oh, not wanting to do it and dragging it on and on and on. I finally did it. And I was expecting God to just like, give me a revelation. And I'm immediately running miles because the power of the Holy Spirit is working within me. And I am a runner now. And that is not how it worked at all. My legs were still itching. My legs were still on fire. It was not a good situation. It was uncomfortable. However, after months of running and walking in faith and continuing to do what God asked me to do, my heart posture changed towards it. I began to want to go outside and to walk. And so the thing about your actions aligning with your heart's desire towards the will of the Father, it may not be that you actually want what God wants, it's that you desire what he desires and you make a decision to make sure your actions align with that. And then he changes your own heart towards it. The third thing um, that you want to do is to ask yourself, am I able to discern God's will? You may be able to see his written will, but are you able to discern his unwritten will? When you desire what he desires, when you align your actions with his will, when your heart is changed and you do end up wanting for yourself the things that he wants from his will, that transformation will lead to discernment. Romans 12, one through two says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. I did the Daniel fast a few months ago, and if you've ever done the Daniel fast, it is strict. There's no animal products. There's no delicious, you know, meat and cheese. There's no bread. There's no sugar. There's no juice. There's no nothing but what has grown from the ground. And it is tough, but I followed the letter of the law to the T for 21 days. I aligned myself with the will of God. I did with my actions what he said to do. And then after the 21 days were over, I was surprised to see that even trying to go back to the way that I was eating before wasn't gonna work out because I was clearly able to see what the unwritten will of God was for my life at that time. And so when you align yourself to his written will, he will change you. Your decisions aren't being changed. Your personhood is changed. And when your personhood is changed and transformed into the will of God, you can see exactly what in his unwritten will he wants you to do in the situations in your life. Now, before I move on, I want to say that even when you are pure of heart, you will still be tempted away. We live in an earth where the enemy is the prince and his goal is to get you distracted. His goal is to impurify your heart. And so you must put on the armor of God. You must abide in his word so that when the enemy comes and tries to steal away that purity and tries to get you back into old things and tries to lure you with old addictions and old friends and old things that you are able to, with the word of God, rightly divide its truth and combat against the enemy. And when you do mess up, it is so important to repent so that you may Turn away from the things that you were doing before, looking ahead and gaining a new level of purity so that you may see God. The single-minded heart, the purged heart, the heart with no double allegiance, the heart not divided, the heart that wills one thing, the heart that is cleared and ready for planting, the pure see God. The last several weeks, I've been having some encounters with God in my day to day life. And these things to anybody else may seem, you know, 
regular encounters, but when you see clearly the truth of God and when you know what it looks like for his goodness to pass by, you see normal things in different ways. And there's another person who found himself in a situation to see God um, in in Exodus 33, 20, though, uh, as I was looking to figure out, OK, what does seeing God mean for everybody? It says God says you can't you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And so that confused me a little bit. Um, and so what does God mean first when he says that we will see him in Exodus 33, 19? It says, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And so seeing God is an experience of his goodness passing by. And in his goodness, you will understand his name of which he has many for yourself. I love that God shows up differently for each of us. For me, I see God through my experiences and my children through symbolic actions. In Genesis 15, Abraham had a vision. God comes through visions. In Genesis 28, God came to Jacob through a dream. In Jeremiah 18, with a potter and clay, uh, God gave a word from the Lord about the house of Israel. God speaks through symbolic actions. In Exodus 8, God spoke through miraculous signs. In Deuteronomy, he spoke through prophets. In 1 Kings 19, after an earthquake, after a fire, which God was not in, he spoke in a quiet whisper. And I'll tell you, he might light something on fire in your life because in Exodus 3, he spoke through a burning bush. Blessed are the pure in heart, so you will see God. And when God speaks to you, you will know he's speaking to you. Nowhere in these verses did any of these people who experienced God's goodness passing by or experienced a message from the Lord, did they say, God, is that you? You will know when God is speaking to you through the power of his Holy Spirit. But lastly, I want you to know that God seeks you out. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. The single-minded heart, the heart that is purged, the heart with no double allegiance, the heart that is not divided, the heart that wills one thing, the will of God, the heart that is cleared and ready for planting, the pure. You will experience God in a way that is unique to your set of circumstances, that is unique to who you are, and he is seeking you out to show you who he is. He is drawing you near. He is waiting to show you himself. He is waiting to pass by with goodness. He is waiting to pass by with his grace. He is waiting to show up in dreams and in signs and in gentle whispers into your life. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The Bible says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Submit yourselves therefore to God and you will see him. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for every ear that is listening right now. I know that you have a purpose and a plan for each person. I ask that you search their hearts and that you bring impurities to the top so that you can scoop them off. I ask that you give them endurance, that you give them patience through the refining process of purifying their hearts, Lord. And then I ask that you allow these women to have some incredible experiences of seeing you. I ask that you pass by wave after wave so they experience your goodness after goodness in their own lives that they are able to tell other people of the experiences they've had father god i thank you for this time in jesus name amen